it's finally time. Today I'm gonna to show you how to program an old Invicare power chair that uses the MK6i electronics. And you can tell it's MK6i because you'll have a pretty big joystick like this. It's got a big color screen. There's a rotating dial here, a button, and your power switch is over here on this side. But the key factor in allowing this to be programmed, there is an SD card slot. Which means this chair can be programmed without a handheld, without a dongle, without anything fancy. Basically, all you need is the SD card with the proper software on it and a laptop computer or some sort of SD card reader. Now, typically when you get one of these chairs brand new, if you look through the paperwork and the manuals, they give you a whole bunch of stuff with the chair. There should be an MK6i basic SD card. This is essentially just a small capacity SD card and it says MK6i basic on it. And this allows you to copy the software off of the chair and onto this and you can send it in remotely via mail or whatnot or plug it into your computer and send the files back and forth to your technical support people, either the dealer or Invicare themselves directly. But I have found a way to convert this into what they call the professional card. And it has the software on it that allows you to make the edits yourself. Now, as per usual, you can make your chair really dangerous by programming some of this stuff and you need to be really careful. Any adjustments you make, you just wanna go a little bit at a time because these things are extremely powerful. This particular chair happens to be an old TDX SP and this one has the four pull motors on it. These four pull motors are very powerful. Once you have the proper software on this card, I can either email you guys the files and tell you how to do it or I can just make one of these cards and send it to you uh, if you just wanna like, I don't know, buy me a cup of coffee or something basically. Just cover the cost of the card is all I'm looking for. But to get started, you wanna pull the little rubber cover off the front here and the SD card sort of slides in here at an angle. I'm gonna turn the chair off and if you see here, see how the card's kind of facing up a little bit? The angle that it goes in matches the line on the side of this controller. So you just want to put the card in and you're going to want the label facing up. It'll stick out about this far when it's in there properly. Once you have the card in there, uh, you can go ahead and turn your joystick on. Ignore that red screen. This chair actually has a glitch. You're, you're probably not going to get that red screen when you turn it on. Next up, you're going to get this little screen here. So what we want to do here is push the joystick once to the left. And then we're going to get this menu that says store to SD card or read from SD card. Now we need to copy the software off of this chair so we can put it in the computer and make our edits. So we're going to be using the store to SD card function and you can see the little arrow there. To move the arrow up and down you push up and down on the joystick like this. Okay so we're going to go ahead and select store to SD card, push left, and then push left one more time to start storing and it'll just take a few seconds and then it says data stored okay. As soon as that's done, turn off your chair, then pull out your SD card, and now we can take it over to the computer and the fun can begin. This particular computer that I'm using is pretty old. It's like a Dell Latitude 2100, but the reason I like this one is it has an SD card slot on the front. So you can just go ahead and stick your card right in there and you don't need any adapters or accessories at all. Now what we're going to do after this card is in the computer, uh, you want to go ahead and open up this PC. I'm running Windows 10 on this, so basically open whatever is going to show you all the drives on your computer. This thing decided to do some updates, so waiting for that to finish and then we'll continue. <laughs> While we're waiting for this computer to update itself, standard disclaimer, and I'm not just saying this to say it, I do not recommend doing any programming on your chair if it's your only chair. If you have a backup, if you have something else you can use, you know, by all means, make customizations. But there is always a small risk when you're doing something like this that a file could get corrupted or a setting could get messed up and you could potentially be in a situation where your chair is not going to be functioning or it may not be functioning in a way that will work for you. So if you're going to attempt any sort of programming like this, make sure you have other options available to you just in case something goes sideways. I have a lot of parts around, I have a lot of different chairs, 
So normally when I'm doing something like this, I'm not relying on one specific thing. I do a lot of stuff that I wouldn't typically recommend people do. But all that aside, if this is something you want to do and you're comfortable with the potential for temporarily having your equipment offline, we can continue. I think we're finally done updating actually for sure this time. Anyways, what I was saying earlier is I should probably be using some sort of screen capture software instead of just pointing this other camera at the screen. This computer is so slow that I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be able to handle uh, any sort of screen capture at the same time. Now, once we've copied the software off of the chair and it's on this SD card, we can stick it in the computer. If it doesn't automatically open up the window that the card's on, just go into this PC or my computer or whatever your operating system has to show the drives. And when you open up the SD card, you're gonna see a whole list of files. There's a bunch of folders that say drive, firmware, seating, blah, blah, blah. There's one application that you wanna open. It's called MK6 underscore IVS. So go ahead and double click on that. Another issue with this computer is the screen's kind of small, so the entire program doesn't quite fit on the screen. Uh, you're gonna get their generic warning that comes up here, and there's a giant button that says okay, so just click on that. And then you wanna go to the file menu, go down to open. Now, if everything's working the way it's supposed to, you should be in the folder with a file that says tdxsp.sys or something similar to the name and model of your chair. If it doesn't, what you wanna do is go into your SD card on the computer and there's a folder called system. Then scroll all the way to the bottom. There's another folder that says user. And that's the folder that will have the file we just copied off of the chair. Double click on that to open it. And here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and maximize this. The screen's, like I said, not big enough necessarily, but here we have MK6i system with all the different options. And what you wanna do if you're making speed adjustments is there's tabs here at the top. You wanna to go to performance adjustment, give it a second to load. And here we're gonna have all the different profiles that are programmed on your chair. Normally it says like indoor average, moderate outdoor, speed level, something like that. You can also change the names of these profiles as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this fourth profile and I'm gonna make it into a soccer mode because I'm gonna be using this chair for power soccer or at least I'm gonna set it up so people can use it for power soccer. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename uh, right here where it says drive name. You can go on there and change it. So I'm gonna change it to soccer. Depending on how your chair was set from the factory, you might see here where it says speed, it might be set to 80% or 50% or something slower. I always run the speed up to 100 and that's gonna make sure you're getting your maximum speed out of the chair. Then we start getting into the other settings that you need to be careful with. Things like forward acceleration, forward braking and the like. These chairs stop kind of slow with factory programming. So for the forward braking, I usually like to turn that up just a little bit. And I believe on this one, you've got, you've got your three different profiles here. Uh, so D1, 2, 3, and 4. D4 is the one we're working on. And then you have all your settings that come across here. So D4 being our soccer one, you can see here that our forward braking is set to 45. I'm gonna bump that up to 50. And then forward acceleration, I'm gonna bump that up to, uh, let's try 25. Forward speed is only set to 50. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that all the way up to 100. Uh, this top row here where it says speed and response, that's just the overall maximum setting. To actually change your speed, it's this second row here under forward settings that you wanna change. So we've got our forward set to 100, forward acceleration's turned up. Reverse speed is only set to 25. I wanna turn that up all the way as well. So we can go fast backwards. Set my reverse acceleration to 25. Reverse braking, we're gonna to set to 50. And we'll scroll down here a little further to our turn settings. Now, these chairs can rotate extremely fast. So you have to be careful with the turn settings. As you can see, the turn speed is set to anywhere between 12 and 24. 
depending on the profile that's programmed on here. The maximum is 24, so I'm gonna set the turn speed for our soccer at 30. I would not go any more than that. That is an extremely fast turn. I'm gonna leave the acceleration alone. Well, actually, I'm gonna set the acceleration to 20 just so it's equal to these other settings here. And turn braking, we'll go ahead and turn that up to 45 so it's the same as the other profiles as well. And then typically here for the torque and traction, I just leave those settings alone. I'm gonna go ahead and change the names of the other profiles because they don't really make any sense. Like, what does speed level mean? I'll just call that fast. And then moderate outdoor will be medium. And indoor average, we'll just call it indoor. Actually, we'll call it idiot mode. There we go. Now when you're done doing all this editing, uh, you're gonna wanna go back to the file menu. And we wanna go ahead and hit save. Now, there is another school of thought here where you could save the file as, so you're not overwriting your existing file just in case something gets screwed up. But the problem with programming with these SD cards and these chairs is anytime you change file names or copy the file off to another spot and put it back, these controllers get really picky. So you're gonna to wanna to be extra careful when you're making changes on here and write down everything you've changed. Maybe take a picture of the settings with your phone before you change it. That way you can put it back to how it was. There is a way in here to go back to the default settings for that chair, but if you try and do a save as and call it a different file name to try and copy it over your desktop and back it up, you're gonna run into problems. Let me show you here real quick. If you do run into problems and you wanna put it back to stock, there's buttons here at the top of each of the profiles that you can click. Like for profile one here, you can click on this, it says use standard program. And when you click on that, you can select which one you want out of the list, hit okay, and it'll ask you, are you sure you want to put this back to normal? And then you can hit yes. And everything in that profile will go back to the normal settings. Then I'm gonna go ahead and change that back to indoor, because, okay, there we go. So file, save, go ahead and close this program and then go into the setting on your computer to safely remove hardware, eject the SD card. And we are set to copy this over to the chair now. The process for copying the software back from the SD card to the chair is almost the same. Basically just put your SD card in here, turn the chair on, and then typically just push the button then you'll get this menu here that says store or read. We want to read from the SD card to the chair. So point your arrow where it says read from. You can see how it changes there. And then go ahead and push left. It'll give you one more confirmation. Push left again to start reading. And it will copy everything over. In a few seconds, it'll say data read okay. Turn off your chair, pull out the SD card, and then when you turn it back on, your new settings should apply. Now once again, this chair has an issue that's not related, so you're not gonna get this red screen on yours when you turn it on, and you won't get that warning. It should turn on and go right into our drive settings. And you can see here, the name is now changed, Indoor. And when we go through the profiles, we have a new one that's called Soccer. So let me go ahead and hop in this chair real quick and I'll show you what the performance adjustments are actually like. We made very small adjustments, but on this chair, small adjustments are huge. Even though I called it a soccer profile, typically for soccer, your chair is gonna need to be a lot more turned up than it is. Right now, the way it's set is probably how I would personally program a chair that I'm gonna be using inside and outside and all that. So uh, let me show you here real quick how, how easily we can maneuver now. The turning speed is a lot faster than it was accelerations quite a bit more and you can turn at speed and it also stops a lot faster forward speed and reverse speed is the same basically in my opinion this just makes the chair a lot more usable if you're in a hurry and you want to maneuver around a program like this is probably what you're looking for. With any chair, everything's different. Users are different. The weight rating is different on the chair. The motors are different. On this one, these particular settings work pretty well. 
You might have a chair that has two pull motors, uh, which are a little bit smaller. They could potentially go faster and maybe not have as much torque. But those settings that I showed you there, the basic few, your forward, turning, and reverse, you can adjust those just a little bit. I mean, do like maybe increments of five or 10 at a time. It takes a little bit of screwing around because you have to keep putting this card in the computer then putting it back in your chair. But now with this program we have on here, if we don't like it, it's already saved on this card. So all I have to do is put it back in the computer now and we can make some further adjustments. I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick just to show you the capability of turning speed on one of these Invacare chairs with the four pull motors. They're truly terrifying. I've set this thing now to a more proper, a more proper soccer profile. And I don't have my feet strapped down right now. Um, if you get dizzy, be careful, but check this out. Um, let me, let me set the camera down. This is the turning speed set to 60 and the turning acceleration set to 35. Um, I'm gonna hold on here. <laughs> that, um, yeah. So reverse, pretty fast. Forward, pretty quick. I could have the forward acceleration turned up more, but on this floor with no carpet, it would just be burning out. Anyways, just to illustrate, that's 60 for the turning speed. This thing will go way faster than you ever would want it to in any sort of normal scenario. But you can definitely, you can definitely get a lot more performance out of one of these things if you feel the need to. <laughs> That's a basic overview of programming Invacare wheelchairs with the MK6i electronics. It's a pretty straightforward process. As far as getting the little SD card, you have to use non-HC compliant cards, which usually are cards that are gonna be around 512 megabytes, definitely smaller than one gig though. And there has to be a pretty specific file format for these to work. If you'd like, hit me up and we can discuss getting one of these things shipped out to you. I can make one, I'll buy the card and get it all set up and everything. Probably just a few bucks, depending on how much the cards are. But hit me up on Twitter if you have any questions, send me a DM and I'll try and help you out the best I can. And again, just make sure you're being careful with this. If, if anything happens, I'd, I'd hate to put someone in a situation where their wheelchair is not working or they have to have some repairs made as a result of any of this. But I also feel like this information should be out there for people that you know, know what they're doing and want to take advantage of the programming capabilities of these things.